Got a mandolin? Ready to learn how to start playing it? Stay tuned. Welcome to Commandolin's introduction to mandolin video. Uh, today I'm going to come at this from a perspective of a complete beginner. Uh, I'll do other videos in the future probably coming at it from a perspective of like a guitar player sliding over, just changing instruments because it's a, it's a totally different mindset. But today, as if you've never picked up a stringed instrument in your life. And uh, before we get going, of course, just want to say make sure I subscribe down below to Command Lin, as there will be plenty of lessons and tutorials and we we'll talk about we we'll talk about the gear and the stuff and and uh, you know just all fun things mandolin. Uh, so make sure you subscribe. Good luck on your mandolin playing journey, and let's get started. All right, we'll go over some basic uh, the parts of the mandolin here before we get going. Uh, think of it almost like a person. The entire uh, wooden part here at the bottom is the body. And then you have the neck here and the headstock. Uh, it's headstock up here. So kind of body like in that in that sense. Uh, this is the tail piece where the strings are attached underneath here. Uh, on some mandolins it's exposed where you can see the strings looped over. Uh, the bridge. Uh, now this is an armrest, is an additional thing that I put on this one. Uh, helps, you know, where your arm rubs on that edge and kind of softens it a bit. And these are string dampeners, which your mandolin will also not come with. That's an add-on thing I've put on. Uh, you may have an oval hole here. Some mandolins have the F holes on the side, like this. Uh, so this is one of those. And you may also have... They also have the A shape or like teardrop shape. These are, they call them F for Florentine because uh, they have the little scroll at the top and the little pointy in the bottom. But there's also the teardrop ones that are just more round. Uh, either one sounds the same. These cost a lot more. Uh, the fingerboard here and then you got the frets, the little, the horizontal, or I guess in this case vertical, little pieces of wire that marks out you know, where you put your fingers on the uh, fretboard. And then, of course, the tuning keys up here, where you attach the strings and tune them, which I promise you is going to be a big deal. Uh, so that's, that's about it, but just so we're all, you know, talking about the same thing as we get going here. Now, if you got your mandolin from a store, hanging off the wall at Guitar Center or whatnot, uh, the bridge is already going to be on there and installed. But if you're just getting this from Amazon, there's a good chance your mandolin came with slack strings and the bridge just lay in there. And before we can play a note, we've got to get the thing, uh, you know, semi uh, set up here. So let's take a quick look at what we should do first. Now, if your mandolin came shipped in any way with a strip of foam underneath the bridge, you know, just kind of held on by loose strings and some foam here. That's just for shipping, so it doesn't scratch or anything. The first thing you need to do is pull that foam out, because a huge part of the mandolin sound is the vibrations are transferred from here into the wood, so you can have a piece of foam in between there. So take the foam out. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, because if your your bridge may have just been laying there you know, loose in the box or something. And you gotta figure out where am I gonna put this thing on here. So trust me, it makes a big difference. Uh, so one easy way to do, if you have an oval hole, like I do here, is you come down to the fretboard, get yourself a ruler, and measure from the nut right here to the 12th fret. You'll have two fret markers here, and the 12th will be the one right beyond that. Measure from here to here as accurately as you can. Then measure from that 12th fret right here over into the body because they're going to be the exact same length. The 12th fret is dividing the string in half between the bridge and the nut. So just measure that over here. This is going to get you, you know, pretty close in the ballpark to get going here. 
if you have an F hole. It might be even a little easier because you can almost, you just center about the F holes have a little point here. And you're going to get in the ballpark just by setting this right there. So that's going to get you close. All right, next thing you're going to need is this a tuner. A clip-on tuner for your headstock is, I mean, invaluable. You just, you just pretty much can't do this without a tuner. I'll, of course, uh, link below if I can find one afterward. To Snark is a big, major brand of tuners. They're about twenty bucks, but I mean, you need a tuner. Real simple. You clip it to your headstock, one button, and when you hit a note, it says what it is. Now I'm dead center there, but if I were to go. You know, if it's a little flat, see it's down here, and as the note gets sharper, as you turn, as you turn the tuning key down here, see now I'm sharp, I'm yellow on the other side. If I'm lower, oh, I went all the way even down here, so I gotta keep coming up, back up to G. You always wanna want to tune up to the note, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but. When you're actually tuning in real life, you're always going to come up to the note. But that's how these work. So as you've you've measured your bridge here and you've got it pretty close, you know, you from here to here. Now tighten the strings up enough where you can make a clear, non-buzzy note. But you can still scoot this around. Now I'm at full tension, so this is going nowhere. But have your strings loose enough where you can scooch this with a little bit of effort. And make a good non-buzzy note. Now it won't matter what the note is. You just play one on the top string here and say it's a D. Make you know make it line up right now it's G. But just find any low note and play it. And then go to the twelfth fret and play it again. Now if that note is red, you know if it's a little flat here then you're going to have to come down here and scoot this back ever so slightly, just the most minuscule little increments. Now, same thing. If you play the note here, it's a little bit sharp, you know, a little bit on the yellow side here, then you will scoot the bridge just this edge, just forward, just ever so slightly. And you're going to get the get it to where the notes can be exactly the same uh, open and on the 12th fret and then come down here in this and do the exact same thing right now I'm at full pitch but just find any note that will line right up here in the middle of your tuner oops let me make it do the sound again it'd be right in the middle now and then play, of course, I have to do it with one hand here, I wish. Then you would fret the note right here at the 12th fret and play it again. And it would be the exact same note on the tuner. And again, just like before, if it's a little bit flat, if you know on the 12th fret is a little bit red like there, you would come down here and scoot this, this side back, just a minuscule amount. And if you know it is just a little bit sharp here, You'll come back and scoot this forward just a little minuscule amount of just tiny little adjustments here. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this still as I'm talking with one hand. But uh, it seems kind of tedious, but just think of it as a fun little, you know, it might take you 10 minutes or so. A little project before you get going. I promise you it will make a world of difference in the playing. Or of course, you know, in a perfect world, if you live somewhere where it's nearby, have a professional just set it up. The set up very important uh, but at the very least you measure here here or put it right there uh, center it up on the ethyls all right so enough about the setting up uh, let's tune it up and get going so of course you've noticed your mandolin has eight strings but really it's four sets of two strings and we're going to tune the thing up now and we're the notes that we're going to tune up to the thickest uh it's the lowest in pitch but the highest like physically 
closest to the ceiling, furthest from the floor. Uh, but this would be a G. We're going to tune this to a G. Both, and then it's got its you know little brother string right next to it. They're both going to be G. We're going to come down here. Both of these, we're going to tune to D. Both of these, we're going to tune to A with our handy tuners. And then E at the bottom. G, D, A, and E. So we're going to have our little tuner on the headstock. And especially when you're tuning up for the first time, if you're putting this thing on out of the box, you're going to think, man, this string is just going to snap because you have to come up. And you keep coming, you keep coming. And now you're watching your tuner, which of course, I wonder if I can aim that at the camera. <laughs> See, as we're tuning, just keep coming up. You're always coming up to the note. Come up to where, right there, see now, dead on. If you go past it, again, don't lower down to just, you know, just the dead center, you would lower down past it and then come up to the note, because this is a critical, critical thing. Then you make sure the next string, now once you've got your first string in, it's real easy, because as you come up to it, you know, I'm just turning the next next tuning key over here. The next string, you'll hear the notes even out. And you want there'll be no vibration. There's all if you're out of tune, like here, one 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 one, hear that vibration. You come up. Look, no vibration there. Checking yourself on the tuner. Oh, maybe it's just air flat still. There we go. So now both G's are making the exact same sound. We're going to do that again here with the D strings. Up here with the A strings. See, it'll, it'll say A. Oops, I'm a little sharp. I'm just demoing here. Uh, in real life, of course, I will come down below that A and then back up and settle in right on the A. And then this is going to be the E. I'm going to do this. That one's going to need just a little tweaking on my part. Let's see, get them all going. Now, when it's all set, it's a very familiar sound. Even with no hands on the fretboard, it sounds to me like an orchestra tuning up. Or, you know, you can just hear that out of an orchestra pit. People tuning up their violin and stuff. It'll sound real smooth, even with uh, no hands on the fretboard. So if you've got that, and I promise you, getting these things ready to play is three-fourths of the battle. Uh, you know, I mean, you can't, if you're out of tune, hear nothing you do is, is going to sound good if... If everything's a little off, and you're even if you're playing the right notes, you know, just critical to go through these stages and get your thing in tune. And then everything you do, even if you don't have a hand on on the neck, it's gonna sound great. All right, let's get started playing. After all this, it's time to uh, make some music, huh? All right, we've been messing around with the thing forever. We've got the bridge in the right place. We've got the uh, got the thing sound, sounding in tune. Time to play some chords, huh? Now this instrument, like most stringed instruments, uh, I don't know, kind of your bass chord, if you will. I don't mean B-A-S-S, -S, but like B-A-S-E, your home chord, if you will, is named after the lowest note. On a guitar, it's an E. Uh, on the ukulele, a C is the lowest note. Well, here on the mandolin, our lowest note is a G. So it kind of, I don't know, like this, the home chord, if you will, for a mandolin. It's a G. So we're going to start right here. Sounds real nice, doesn't it? Uh, you come down here. It's your top two, two strings here. On the second string you're going to take your first finger 
put it right here in the second fret, making this note. Take your, <laughs> don't mean to do that to you, but take your middle finger, put it right here in the third fret, making this note. So put them both there at the same time. You have this little angular kind of shape with your fingers. Second fret, right here. Third fret, right here. Take your pick and right around the middle of, sorry, I keep doing that. You know, use this finger right around the uh, where the fretboard ends. With both fingers here. Just hit all the strings, real nice. Sounds great. There's our G chord. If we take these same two fingers, we move everything toward the ceiling, one string. Take our, uh, you know, just go, yoink. You don't have to say yoink, but go. Mm. Now, second fret here, third fret here, and even, you can still hit all the strings again. C chord, C major. First one, G. Now, see as you're doing this, because the, the neck of the, of the thing is so small, it almost just settles right into your thumb, right in between here. As we're doing this, just kind of in your your webbing. I should have mentioned before how important it is to have a strap as you're sitting or standing, so that it's in the same height, you know, regardless. I'm kind of hunched over here because I'm trying to show a camera, but in real life, we'll be, we'll be leaning back here doing this a bit. So here we are, C, or I'm sorry, G chord right here. Everything up, you can still hit all the strings. C chord. You can pick individual notes. Just anything you do is going to be C chord. Here's that G, same thing. You can. Anything you do to the strings is going to sound cool. Now we're gonna see they both have the same angular shape here. Now, just to uh, throw in, we're gonna do one more chord here today at least. This is a different shape. See, everything moved on me. This is gonna be the second fret right here. You can, as long as we're doing this, we're doing basic two finger chords, and you're gonna find yourself as you go through playing these with various fingerings because sometimes you'll need other fingers to be doing other things. But just the most basic way you can do it, I figure, is just now here's second fret on the top string, second fret on the bottom string, again hitting all the strings. That's D major, D. So there's our three chords we're going to go with right here, right? G. I mean, the most simple thing you can do is just strum one, two, three, four. Switch up to the C chord. One, two, three, four. Come back down here. See, now I found myself I'm using different fingers even as I've subconsciously as I've done this. <laughs> Wouldn't help to learn, uh, you know, just be handy. Either way, perhaps these fingers are a little stronger. But a lot of times you're going to wind up doing like this because you're going to need your other, you know, you're going to need your other fingers to do other stuff. So just kind of get in the habit of both ways because, you know, whatever feels comfortable as you can go on here. So one, two, three. From here you just one, two, three, four. You come back to the G. One, two, three, four. Now that D chord. One, two, three, four. See, even without strumming patterns, without worrying about bark and, and all the stuff here, just simple, just to get something happening here. And then 
G two D two. There's really no just mess around with these chords. There's 20 trillion songs that have these three chords. Everything from you know I mean Sweet Home Alabama you know D C. There's no wrong combination. Just have fun messing with. You know, I'm mean, gonna go D. Something I was doing there, kind of, kind of, you know, subconsciously. As you're messing with, you know, we're not gonna get into complicated strumming patterns and all this right now. But one thing you can always do, you can always hit the lowest note of the of the chord. Here's my G again. You know, the open lowest string. You can hit that. And then strum and gives you a little you know you don't even have to hit the notes per se you can just you know hit the bass half you know the top two just kind of, and that can give you a, just as you're messing with stuff the important thing is just to mess with it enjoy the sound have fun that's such a nice You know, it's important not to get caught up and watch too many Chris Thiele videos where, I mean, Lord knows the dude blows me away, but but uh, don't uh, forget to just enjoy the mellow sound. They sound so nice. So, so just mess with these three chords so we get comfortable with, you know, play them fast. Individual notes. Just mess with it. There's no, there's no wrong answer. It'll all sound neat. We'll just have fun. We're gonna start there and then we're gonna talk about one little uh, this note pattern to mess with too to have a little one more layer of fun here. All right, so we've learned three chords. I've been messing with them a little bit. I swear half the bluegrass repertoire is gonna be these three chords. Or, you know, pop music in general, perhaps. So you get this going. Now we're gonna introduce, in case you're looking for something, uh, you know, a little more fun to play with as well, a quick scale. A little note pattern you can mess with because this is going to be good I'll just show you this pattern here and it's good all over the neck any note but we're going to start on the open G down here at the bottom there's a little pattern here if we go from the open G take our first finger put in the second fret A take our middle finger see we skip the string with the dot and go to the fourth fret and take our ring finger and put it on the fifth fret right here. It's going to have a dot on it. Nothing fancy in the right hand. I'm just, you know, downstroking here. Now move one string down to the D and do the exact same thing. Open, second, fourth, fifth. We've just gone up the G scale. We went from a G note here to a G note here. If you're in tune, which I almost am, I'll be the same note. That's the G major scale. Anywhere in the mandolin, you start that pattern Whatever the bottom note is where you started on, it's that scale. We just did G because I started on G. We could start it here on D and go. We could start it here on the uh, second string.
again, it's important not to start thinking all Chris Seeley and Sierra Hall here and thinking it's important to start ripping through these things at blinding speed because for a good long time, it's not. It's just learning where the notes are. Now, a thing that I do a lot that helped me a lot when I was learning uh, music way back when, take takes three of these notes and practice just sit and mess with just those three notes there's no wrong answer but just make up little melodies and do things don't worry about other notes Watch TV as your commercials are on, just noodle it. Feeling adventurous? Add another note. Don't worry about what you're playing, there's no wrong answer. Just uh, get used to. Or, I mean, again, just pick any. You need a couple notes. It's kind of your brain starts to get used to just kind of expressing itself in a little melody. Any melody, doesn't matter. Any notes, but this is just a pattern to mess with. Well, you know, open string, second, fourth, fifth. Open string, second, fourth, fifth. Now, after you've messed, you know, you've done the three note thing, you've messed with three notes for a while, maybe four notes. And actually, just try it with all eight notes. Play some to just get used to the pattern. Sorry, a plane went by and I had to cut the video for a sec. But again, the gist is we're just you just have these you just have these notes here. And we just just want you to play in that just that pattern. Again, you're not worried about being blazing speed here. You're worried about making all the notes sound nice. And you don't want these, you know, you don't want flub notes. You want it to, want it to ring out. You can start messing with notes. Like if you want to get, instead of just going, you can try putting your finger on the fret bef below it keeping your finger on there and sliding it up to it like two notes for the price of one or down add that in as you're messing around see how that changes the sound again you're just messing with things there's no wrong answers just explore the sound of the instrument. You got you got your chords here. See how nice that fits in if you play your G chord like you did before. And there's that G scale. Now the fun thing about the mandolin is its symmetry. If you've learned this pattern right here, well, right here is just this note, but here that exact same pattern replicates. Two, it goes up two right here, and then down the next string. Now this takes some, you know, by the time you're doing this, you're getting your pinky into the game. 
which a lot of people find challenging at first, but there's the exact same pattern. Without even knowing what the notes are, there's, there's two octaves worth of scales. And would you believe it, since we got room on the fretboard, if you can cram your fingers in there, is a third octave, the exact same pattern. It's just that same, and it repeats anywhere. If you start it down here on the D note, and you end it here, you could start here and do the same thing. Here's that D chord that we talked about before. Just you know, kind of practice. So anyway, this is just a little, a little. Just so you have something to mess with. Again, there's no wrong answers. Just get used to the patterns. Get used to the sounds. You know, I mean, I know plenty of plenty of music that has a lot of notes, and I know classical stuff, and a lot of Irish Celtic stuff, which has a lot of notes, but sometimes I just sit here, I'll just, I'll just let it ring out, and just enjoy the sound of the thing. I'll play a chord, and I'll just stare at the back. The back is so nice. I know about this thing as an additional accessory that I'll talk about in some a different video. It keeps my... In a nutshell, it keeps your belly flab from uh, muffling the sound. But sometimes I just play a few chords. And I just stare at the thing. I just think they're so nice. All right, that should get us. Uh, all right, there's uh, there's just a couple scales to mess with and to have fun. It's all about having fun and just. Enjoying the sound of the thing, cause just play anything. All right, that should be that should be plenty for today. We've tried to cover a lot of ground here, uh, starting with taking this thing out of the box with loose strings and no bridge attached to uh, going over uh, parts of the instrument, uh, a few different chords, three chords. You'll get a lot of mileage, I promise you, out of this G, C, and the D chords. And just the most basic little uh, scale to go along with. And again, just mess with these things. There's no wrong answers at this point. You're just sitting by yourself, just learning, just exploring the thing. And uh, we're going to start there, and uh, there will be additional videos coming on here about uh, where to go from here. But this should be uh, plenty to mess with for now. So again, uh, be sure to subscribe down below, Commando Land if you haven't already, all things uh, Mandolin, and happy play and have fun.